The sun blazed over the dry fields of rural Zimbabwe, where farmers toiled under the weight of an unforgiving climate. Among them was a young boy named Maxwell Chikambutso, who watched as his family struggled to grow enough food to survive. Even then, he knew there had to be a better way. Years later, that same boy would become the inventor of a groundbreaking AI-powered agricultural system. Maxwell's journey began in a small village, where he witnessed firsthand the challenges of traditional farming. Crops failed due to unpredictable weather, water was scarce, and fertilizers were too expensive for most families. He spent his childhood tinkering with broken radios and electronics, fascinated by how things worked. His curiosity led him to teach himself engineering, often staying up late to read books by candlelight. By the time he reached his 20s, Maxwell had already built several inventions, but none as ambitious as what came next. One day, while observing a farmer struggling to irrigate his fields, Maxwell had an epiphany. What if artificial intelligence could predict exactly when and where water was needed? The idea consumed him, and he began working tirelessly to bring it to life. His first prototype was crude, a simple sensor connected to a basic algorithm, but it worked. The system detected soil moisture levels and adjusted irrigation automatically, saving both water and labor. Word of his invention spread quickly, and soon, farmers from neighboring villages came to see it in action. Maxwell knew he was onto something revolutionary. He expanded his design, integrating more sensors to monitor soil health, temperature, and even pest activity. The AI analyzed this data in real time, providing farmers with actionable insights through a mobile app. No longer did they have to rely on guesswork. Every decision was backed by precise, data-driven recommendations. Crop yields began to increase, sometimes doubling within a single harvest season. Water usage dropped dramatically, a critical improvement in drought-prone regions. Chemical fertilizers were no longer overused, reducing costs and environmental harm. Small-scale farmers, who once struggled to feed their families, now had surplus crops to sell. Maxwell's invention wasn't just a tool, it was a lifeline. But he didn't stop there. He envisioned a future where every farmer in Africa could access this technology, regardless of income. To make that happen, he needed to refine the system further and scale production. He partnered with local universities, training students to help improve the AI's predictive capabilities. Governments and NGOs took notice, offering funding to expand the project's reach. Soon, pilot programs were launched in multiple countries, each showing remarkable success. In Kenya, maize farmers saw a 60% increase in productivity. In South Africa, vineyards used the system to optimize grape quality with minimal water waste. Even in arid regions like Namibia, crops thrived where they once withered. Maxwell's AI wasn't just changing farming, it was reshaping entire communities. Yet, for all its success, the inventor remained humble. He often traveled to remote villages, personally installing systems and training farmers. His mission was never about profit, but about empowering people. Africa has the land, the people, and the potential to feed itself, he would say. All we need is the right technology. As demand grew, so did challenges. Some farmers were hesitant to trust machines over generations-old traditions. Others lacked internet access, making real-time data difficult to transmit. Maxwell adapted, developing offline modes and simpler interfaces. He also incorporated traditional farming knowledge into the AI's algorithms, blending old and new wisdom. Slowly, resistance faded as results spoke for themselves. By 2023, over 10,000 farms across Africa were using Maxwell's system. Stories poured in of children returning to school because their families could now afford tuition. Women, who made up the majority of small-scale farmers, gained financial independence. Villages that once relied on food aid became self-sufficient. The impact was undeniable, but Maxwell's vision stretched even further. He saw a future where AI-powered agriculture could combat global food insecurity. With climate change worsening, the world needed sustainable solutions fast. His team began working on adaptations for different climates, from tropical to temperate regions. Researchers from Europe and Asia reached out, eager to collaborate. Maxwell welcomed the partnerships, 
knowing that innovation thrived on shared knowledge. Still, he insisted that Africa remain at the center of this revolution. This isn't just about technology, he often said. It's about justice, giving Africa the tools to control its own destiny. As the sun set over another day of progress, Maxwell stood in a field, watching his system at work. The sensors hummed softly the AI process data and the crops grew taller than ever before. For the first time in history, African farmers had an edge against nature's unpredictability. And this was only the beginning. The world was taking notice of Maxwell's AI-powered farming revolution. International media dubbed him the Elon Musk of African agriculture, but he shrugged off the comparison. I'm just a man who saw a problem and tried to fix it, he said in one interview. Yet, his humility couldn't overshadow the magnitude of his achievement. Scientists from MIT and Stanford requested to study his algorithms. The United Nations invited him to speak at global food security summits. Even tech giants like Google and IBM proposed collaborations. But Maxwell remained focused on his original goal, transforming African agriculture from the ground up. He expanded his team, hiring young African engineers and data scientists. Together, they developed new features, like disease prediction and automated pest control. Drones were added to the system, scanning fields for early signs of blight or infestation. The AI could now recommend organic alternatives to pesticides, further reducing environmental harm. Farmers who once feared technology now embraced it, seeing it as an ally rather than a threat. In Malawi, a grandmother named Grace became the system's most vocal advocate. Before, I prayed for rain, she said. Now, I pray for my tablet's battery to last. Her laughter echoed through the village as she showed off her thriving tomato garden. Stories like Grace's multiplied, painting a hopeful picture of Africa's agricultural future. But Maxwell knew that scaling up presented new hurdles. Infrastructure gaps, like unreliable electricity, hindered deployment in some areas. So he integrated solar power into the system, making it fully energy independent. Language barriers were another challenge. So the AI was programmed to communicate in local dialects. Every obstacle became an opportunity to innovate further. Soon, the technology caught the eye of investors. Venture capitalists offered millions to commercialize the system globally. Maxwell considered the offers carefully but refused to compromise accessibility. This isn't just a product, it's a movement, he insisted. Instead, he launched a social enterprise, reinvesting profits into rural training programs. His model proved that technology could be both cutting edge and inclusive. By 2024, the system had reached over 30 countries outside Africa. In India, rice farmers used it to reduce water waste by 40%. In Brazil, coffee growers improved bean quality while preserving rainforests. Even in the US, small organic farms adopted the AI to minimize chemical use. Maxwell's invention was no longer just an African solution, it was a global one. Yet, his greatest pride remained in the local impact. In Zimbabwe, a new generation of inventors looked up to him as a hero. Schools began teaching coding and robotics inspired by his story. Young girls, especially, saw themselves in his mission, pursuing STEM fields in record numbers. If Maxwell can do it, so can I, became a common refrain. But Maxwell himself was already thinking decades ahead. He envisioned AI networks where farms communicated with each other, sharing data for regional optimization. He dreamed of fully automated vertical farms in urban centers, cutting down on transport costs. Most of all, he wanted to ensure that no child ever went hungry because of outdated farming methods. His team was already experimenting with blockchain to create transparent food supply chains. Consumers could soon scan a QR code and see exactly how their food was grown. This level of accountability, Maxwell believed, would revolutionize food systems worldwide. As his influence grew, so did his platform. He used every speaking opportunity to call for equitable technology distribution. The future of AI must not repeat the mistakes of the past, he warned. It must lift everyone, not just the privileged few. Policymakers listened, 
drafting new laws to support agritech innovations in developing nations. Global funding for sustainable agriculture tripled within two years. Maxwell's name became synonymous with a new kind of progress, one that balanced profit and purpose. Still, he refused to slow down. Late nights in the lab turned into breakthroughs like biodegradable sensors. Field tests in the harshest climates pushed the AI's limits, making it even more resilient. Every failure was a lesson, every success a stepping stone. Then, in 2025, the ultimate validation came. Maxwell was awarded the Nobel Prize for his contributions to food security. Accepting the honor, he dedicated it to the farmers who trusted his vision. This prize isn't mine, he said. It belongs to every person who dared to believe that change was possible. The world erupted in applause, but Maxwell's mind was already elsewhere. As he stepped off the stage, reporters asked what was next. He smiled and said simply, We're just getting started. Back in Zimbabwe, the fields were greener than ever. Farmers worked side by side with machines, their lives transformed by a boy who once dreamed of a better way. And somewhere in the distance, another young inventor tinkered with a broken radio, wondering what else was possible. The revolution, after all, had only just begun.